Yeah, welcome. It turns out this is take two. I've only seen one minute and 20 seconds of this video. But you know how I am, I ramble and I talk about random junk going on and so like all of that, um, I don't think I'm gonna put it. I mean, I think I have, no, I mean, I think it's dead, it's gone. It's, it's gone. So whatever, take two, the camera died, no reason why. The battery's not dead, the card's not full, it just turned off. It happens like once every 700 videos. Anyways. Oh, can we go back to the beginning of this? Uh, Alright, so, uh, Elite Bata, Patience, Guns N' Roses. Um, what did I say in the beginning last time? Um, oh, I did just notice that he's playing a jumbo guitar. I've never actually noticed that before because most of the time it's, it's kind of off the screen a little bit. A jumbo guitar. It feels weird saying the same shit twice. I'm just gonna be honest, that's like not how I roll. Anyways, uh... A jumbo guitar is a bigger box. A jumbo refers to the body size. The body being <laughs> this part of the guitar. The body, uh, this is a, just a normal standard size guitar. His is a jumbo, so all of this lower extremity, the lower bout of the instrument is bigger, which gives you a, a louder sound, and possibly depending on like the, the wood and stuff like that, a, a deeper sound, a more resonant sound, because it's effectively a speaker box, and, um, uh, so the way the sound travels through the guitar, I'll make this quick, like 20 seconds. How, how does the sound travel actually through a guitar? So you have the string that, that vibrates, and it vibrates against a nut a little bit. Got some stuff going on there, but mostly in the bridge. And then the bridge, of course, is fanned out because we're transferring the vibrations from the strings to the bridge through the face plate, which then goes into the rest of the guitar vibrates and then shoots out the sound hole. Anyways, I think that was important because of the jumbo size thing. Um, Patience is an awesome song. I grew up loving Guns N' Roses. Like, Appetite for Destruction, Lose Your Illusion, that shit is all a phenomenal. Slash is one of my favorite guitar players of all time. Uh, just tasty note choices, and let's see if we can make this video without the camera cutting off. Is that cool? Can we do that? Oh! Something I said in the last video, which was spur of the moment, but now I want to say it because I think it might be helpful. I don't know. I don't know if it's helpful. It's weird. Like, I, that's why I just like to talk and not repeat myself. Um, I'm a little tired, but because I have been choosing to go outside and, and do workouts and running, jogging, well not much running, jogging, um, calisthenics, and I realized, you know, when I was sick a couple weeks ago, that you can, um, you can be tired because the world crushes you, you can be tired because you have gotten sick, uh, but if none of those are happening, you could just be tired because you choose to work on yourself. And I think, um, I think that's good. Like, why not tire yourself out by choosing to put, um, I'm talking about the healthy people out there. I'm talking about the healthy people where things are okay. You know, if you feel pretty good and not worn down, maybe, uh, you know, wear yourself out a little bit. Anyways, I've already been talking for three minutes. My bad. Let's go. Oh, and like I said, I've seen about a minute and 20 seconds of this. Well, so I can go ahead and tell you something that I already noticed before. But instead of telling you what I noticed, I want you to listen to where these notes are on the neck. He's playing a lot on strings three, two, and one. Uh, that's the high E, the B, the G string. And he's playing up on the neck, you know, I don't know, between fret seven and 12. two other guitars hanging above his head. Alright, 
So we're almost caught up to where I've seen, which is where I realized was uh, he's done a really good job of contrasting a high register versus a low register. Um, because when, he's, when you're taking a melody of a song, like someone's singing, um, you can really put it wherever you want on the guitar as long as it's playable. So he's putting it in more in a bass register, which is cool because it's a contrast to the high part. And a lot of music is contrast. Contrast helps keep the listener invested in the music. Okay, so let's talk about, oh, hold on. Let me grab my, uh, uh, my steel string because it's, I think it's a little more appropriate. Whoa, hey, don't break anything over there. Um, so I think what he was doing, oh, sorry, I was playing something different myself earlier. Um, So you're holding this D chord. So you end up doing pull-offs with your uh, first finger and fourth finger. Right? Uh, because... Right? Your, your second finger is busy holding down this uh, D note in your D chord, and then you can do your ornaments. Now, why don't you use third finger? You, for, I think most people would l look to use their third finger, but it actually turns out you have more leverage with your pinky because you have more space. Leverage, right? Like a, like a lever. You have more leverage. If you're already using finger two, you have more leverage using finger four than finger three. If you practice pull-offs, pull-offs from, or hammer-ons from two to three, even though they're close together, is harder than two to four. There's less, there's less power on two to three. So you end up doing this thing. And that's from finger one to four, while two holds something down. Leverage, man. You gotta understand the physics of your fingers so you can make good, good choices. The question is, is, is something hard because it's just hard or is something hard because you made an incorrect decision on how to execute it? And that can mean everything in a performance. third let's cover those thirds for a second uh oh the cat just came in the room please don't let her fuck up the camera um these thirds i'm not tuned like him but they're still the same thing so we're playing a lot of thirds on uh the second and third string the g and the b string 
uh, because G and B is naturally a major third. And a lot of times, no matter how, how you tune your guitar, you're going to have a pretty decent third there. But you, by moving in harmony, harmony being, in this case, two notes against each other, right? And he's doing a lot of that right there. And you just have to get used to moving two fingers as one. So hammer on with two fingers. So like one finger, second finger, both together. And then learn to slide together. So you slide one finger, another finger, and then at the same time. And that's how you get a cool little harmony in your melodic line. Pinky again. So cat. We're listening to Leap. So what was that? So what that was, was it's not going to make any sense on my guitar, uh, but I'll still show you what he did. It's he moved up to his 5th fret, and then he used the harmonics on the 7th fret. So my, my pinky, just flatten out your pinky. And so you reach over the bass note. That's what he just did. Whoops. better note for those harmonics. a good time I think he had a good time on that one all right I said everything I need to say in the middle of that video there's no reason to keep y'all any longer if you are here this long you're just a tremendous supporter you're you I don't know you're just a great person uh, there's only certain people that watch things to the end you know what I'm saying I know how it is there's lots of videos when I watch them some some I don't watch them in anyways on behalf of me and a leap and the cat, 
I wish you nothing but the best. Cat, that is not an invitation for you to come over here and fuck with my shit. It's just not. All right, I'm out.